Have you ever wondered how it feels like to trip on 7 grams of mushrooms? But most importantly, have you ever wondered if it even makes sense to trip on such a high dose? Well, these are the same questions I had before actually tripping on that dose. So if you're curious and you want to know the answers, just stick till the end. So you're sure you're going to get all the juice, okay? Anyways, my name is Patrick, but I will end the presentation here because all of you already know me. And I'm going to divide the video in mainly two segments. The first segment is going to be the trip report. And the second segment, the most important, is going to be what I learned and my final conclusions. So if you're a lazy ass, just skip to the second. Okay? If not, if you're a curious boy, well, but if you're a curious boy, just follow all along. So let's start with the trip report. Three weeks ago, around three weeks ago, some friends invited me to Germany to spend the new year with them. And one of them said to me, Patrick, you know what? The day after you come, we're gonna trip on seven grams of mushroom. Do you want to? I'm like, okay, why not? Let me try. I was quite skeptical in the beginning because my approach was always that of building my way up slowly. And I always thought it didn't make sense to trip on such a high dose. But since I'm quite curious and a bit open-minded when I can, I actually decided to give it a try and to see if my assumptions were correct or not. So we're sitting in a living room. My set is quite good, although I would say I was a little bit depressed but I already had a lot of experiences with psychedelics. I've been using psychedelics for four years now. So I already knew, you know, set, setting, letting go, allowing the experience, all of this kind of stuff. I already knew. The setting was awesome. These two were really good friends. The environment was really calm, loving, safe, except for two candles that were sitting there, but okay. Uh, don't look at this. So <clears throat> we are sitting there preparing ourselves for the experience. We talk a little bit, meditate a little bit, drink some tea and we start eating the mushrooms. The first thing I would say, seven grams of mushrooms are really hard to eat. In fact, I even needed to take some ananas in my one mouth, in my mouth and then eating it with mushrooms because they were too much and I didn't like the taste. So the next time I will make the tea and I suggest to you as well to make the tea. 40 minutes after, the mushrooms start to kick in as usual and I'm starting to feel, you know, the usual mushroom trip. Uh, I'm starting to receive all of this information. So I talk with the guys, but really I feel like it's not even almost me talking, it's some other part of me. I'm just receiving information I'm talking. But after a while, and this is where the real trip starts, and the mess in a way starts, is that after a while, I start to lose grip of reality. The trip starts to become so strong, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, that I start to lose grip of reality. Now, what do I mean when I say this? Imagine that usually reality is like a piece of wood that you can grab, a stick that you can grab. So when you grab the stick and when you can move it, you feel safe because, I mean, you can grab it, you can move it, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But in that instance, what happened is that suddenly, unexpectedly, out of nowhere, I was not able anymore to grab this stick. And as soon as I realized that, as soon as my mind realized that, I started to have a shit ton of fear, shit ton of panic. Because I was like, oh no, <laughs> please, no, 
<laughs> I don't want this. I didn't expect it to be so strong. And so I start to enter in this panic mode because I want the experience to stop. All of a sudden, the experience around me starts to become really overwhelming. I want to stop the music. I want to just stop, stop it all. But as some of you, my psychonauts friends already know, when you start to resist the experience, the mushroom starts to slap you in the face and starts to make the experience even worse. And in fact, this is what happened. The third phase of the trip started when I was so afraid that I was completely started to freak out. In the sense that I completely lost the grip of reality. So I would take the face of my friend, I would look him in the eyes and I was like, can you listen to me? Do you hear me? Are you real? Because <laughs> I would perceive the world around me as being not real at all. I was just being imaginary. And in the first phase, this scared me a lot. But in the second phase, I saw in this an opportunity to escape from reality. In the sense that I was like, okay, the world is melting around me, so fuck it, let me just escape. And uh, so that you can understand, in the freakout phase, it was not me consciously with my rational mind taking choices. But when I mean that I was freaking out, what I mean is that my unconscious mind completely took control, almost completely took control of what was happening. So at a certain point, I just wanted to escape this reality. I just wanted to go away. And I just started to go around and fall on the ground. And when I was falling on the ground, I was just, I was so high that I would just... So when I was falling on the ground, I would just feel like I would fall for infinity, right? And I, I fell on the ground. I like uh, bumped my head against something. I bumped some... Uh, food that was there that went on the carpet i pissed in my pants on a certain point like i was really freaking out just just to make you understand because it's hard to convey in two words it's hard to convey rationally and linearly so i was there freaking out trying to escape from reality but after a certain point i realized that there was no way out so i just started to lay on the couch started to relax and to let go. In this fragment of relaxing and letting go, I started to experience the trip in a more kind of classical way. So I would see, for instance, two of my friends being gods, and I was the god as well, and we were the same god talking with itself, and we were having lots of... Uh, conversations about, you know, you see, no matter what we do, we'll come back here because the point is for us to leave this, ex all of this kind of philosophical debate, philosophical conversations. So it was basically God talking with himself, trying to convince himself that God will always come back and trying to explain to himself why God starts to, why God comes back every time into this reality. Yeah. After a while, the experience like was still quite overwhelming and I was still resisting it. But after a while, I just completely let go of any resistance. And this was the point where I felt at peace. I felt at ease. I felt, ah, Finally, I felt the hand of God coming to me and saying, It's okay, Patrick, don't worry. It's okay. 
and this was the point of the come down so slowly I started to come down I started to realize what I did around me because there was a lot of confusion I pissed myself in the pants the, the carpet was all dirty because I made the food fall on the ground and I slowly started to realize that I actually was trying to escape but there was no way for me to escape and that in the end I actually came back into this reality and when I came back into this reality and I saw all the mess I've done because again remember that I was invited to this house so it was not even my house so I've done a lot of mess in the house of this guy I exposed these guys to a lot of risk because I mean I really freaked out I started screaming at a certain point we, then we went out uh, and you know police could come a, a lot a lot of really bad stuff could have happened in that freaked out moment so I put at risk the guys that were there so when I came back in the calm down phase I started to feel really ashamed like a deep deep shame for what I've done a deep shame of the fact that I was completely careless and that I was completely selfish that I completely didn't care about the environment I was in because I was just trying to escape from that reality because I believed that the only thing that existed in the peak of the experience was me so I really didn't care whatever I was doing so it was quite interesting to experience this deep level of shame but the beautiful part of that is that uh, the guys really reassured me they said yes Patrick don't worry it's okay they really made me understand that whatever I've done they didn't judge it and they actually accepted it and it was okay and this was quite healing and after a while the trip started to wear off I started to come back into my kind of normal state of mind into my rational mind I could have a conversation with them and all of that and when I came back I actually started to think and to reflect about the trip and to make sense of the whole experience so now I want to share with you what I actually learned from that experience we're gonna have a, have a first job phase where I'm gonna share with you what I personally learned from ex my experience so what I learned about myself and then we're gonna have another chapter when I'm gonna share with you what I learned in general like generally speaking so what I learned about myself from this trip is that first of all I realized Although I'm not completely sure 100% about that but I really think now that what the mushroom basically does it it takes whatever you have already inside and it just exaggerates it it just pushes it outwards so it just takes all of your unconscious patterns and it just pushes them outwards and in my case what happened is that the mushroom pushed outwards my desire to leave this world it pushed outwards my solipsism it pushed outwards my refusal of being in this reality and it really exaggerated them so I had the possibility to see with my own eyes to be aware of this part of myself and to actually realize that and this is the main thing I really realized in the dream that I felt like I cannot possibly escape this reality there's no way out of this reality everything I'm gonna do I'm gonna eventually like I'm here I cannot go anywhere else 
and I realized that actually this reality is as beautiful as the one you go on with psychedelics. Because I was like, since I cannot escape it, so why don't I just accept it? And as I accepted this reality, I started to love it. A space opened for me to understand this reality, to experience it, to explore it, to just accept it. And so, finally again, I just realized that this reality is as beautiful as the psychedelic one. And this really is the main thing I really learned from that trip. This was the main insight, this was the main experience, the main realization that I feel like I'm integrating even now into my day-to-day -day life. Okay. Let us come now to what I learned in general from that trip. The first thing that I learned is that tripping on such a high dose, it's really, really dangerous. And you cannot do that just casually. Because honestly, in that state, I was so freaked out, I was so irrational, that I could, if I was by myself, and if I was near a balcony, no jokes, I could have just jumped. I could just have killed myself. So it's really dangerous. So you can endanger yourself physically. You can put other people in danger. And also, the risky part of it is that you can put the whole psychedelic community into danger. Because let's imagine I was at home by myself and I took these mushrooms and I would just completely freak out go on the street and take my clothes off, right? Of course, they would call the police and they would fucking arrest me. And mushrooms and psychedelics would have a really bad reputation because of that. And in fact, this is actually what happened in the past in the 60s. A lot of people would just freak out, would just misuse psychedelics. And so psychedelics now have some bad reputation in like, culture in general. So really, really dangerous to trip on such a high dose. Second lesson is that this dose is not for everyone. And I would actually say it's for really the, a small percentage of people. There are some people, for instance, like these friends I went to that are completely fine on taking big doses. They can manage them. That's the important part, they can manage them without completely freaking out. And for these people, it's okay to take high doses because uh, these high doses help them, they have benefits from them, whatever. But I feel for the majority of people, especially people that are young like me and that are a little bit mentally, mentally unstable still, I honestly would not recommend that. I would recommend the usual approach of just build your way up slowly to a dose that you can manage. In a dose that you would not have to completely freak out, right? So at least you would have a pleasant experience, you can manage the experience, you can learn from the experience because you will remember more things. And generally, you would just feel better about it because you feel like you can manage it, okay? The third lesson is such trips can be good for some people. You can take them, such huge trips. But if you take them, it must necessarily, necessarily must be programmed and in a really safe environment. Because the lesson here, the third lesson is that freaking out is actually, I would say, beneficial. I had some benefits on completely freaking out and seeing what my unconscious mind was 
having inside itself. I had some benefits, but in order to do such an experience, the best would be to do it with somebody else and in an environment where nothing bad can happen, where there's no police, where there's no other people around that you can freak out in front of, where you cannot hurt yourself possibly. So for instance, I would say, if you want to do such a high dose, the ideal environment would be maybe in summer, in a like flatland with no people and there you can completely freak out and there's a huge benefit of doing that but for all like for normal occasions for normal people for ordinary people my conclusion is that the best way to take psychedelics is take them easy take them slowly start low and slowly confidently peacefully serenely build your way up and integrate the experience integrate what you have in each trip so this was my previous approach and i feel this is going to be my approach still and such high trips will be just a an exception just an occasion once in a while yeah these were my final conclusions for this video that was it as always i hope it was useful to you i always love guys when you comment on the videos so comment if you had such big doses comment if you have some improve like some constructive critiques to make to this channel comment if you feel happy if you had a girlfriend just say yeah i feel happy today just let me know that you're here guys let me know that i'm speaking to someone i always appreciate it and yeah that was it see you in the next one bye bye